tell. You're all starting to get it. Woo! Yes! It is the Yeah, Come On Show, show 119, brought to you by Backwards Audio, because we can't play it straight, because they want our money. Thunder, love walked in through the door. Hey, I'm Southside Steve, your host of the Yeah, Come On Show, again, 119, baby. And Brett Barney, Mr. Brett, you're my co-host, and then our co-co-host is Mr. Evan Brando, we like to call him. And uh, welcome to a, another fine filled show. And I know, uh, I know for a fact because I'm looking. We're all drinking. Everybody's drinking. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Come on, sir. There you go. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, imagine us drinking. I'm drinking a dark liquor. Looks like Brett's drinking a beer. And I'm it's not a, sure. It's vodka, that. vodka, and one of those little orange squeeze. I'm trying to get rid of everything in my house for this move. All I've got left alcohol wise here is a little bit of vodka. You're scavenging. Wait, hold on. Brett and I, hold on, Brett. Uh, I know for a fact Evan and I just saw you with a white claw second. Oh, wait, wait. I was thirsty. <laughs> so, you, so you have a white claw in one hand and a vodka juice in another. And he's drinking them both at the same time. Yeah, Kimbo. <laughs> How do you know somebody's still in college? Brett. That was <laughs> God, I'm like Van Wilder, except fatter and without a golf cart. You're like Chris Farley at the beginning of Tommy Boy. Yeah. But you know what? Van Wilder was the last to get a hold of Tara Reed when there was still a little hotness left in that. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Whether he really had sex in real life with her, I don't know. But I don't think it would have been hard. You know how these actors fall in love or not fall in love, fall in lust with whoever they're acting with and they start having sex? I can see he's funny. She's easy, right? That's Am I wrong? real. I've having dabbled in acting when you like play opposite for someone, it's weird. Your brain tricks you into being like, Oh man, that's this girl. She's kind of weird. But if you're, if you're kissing and there's something going on, you know, at all, like you play like a relationship of any kind. Yeah. Believe me, as a no stranger to independent films, uh, I've seen it firsthand. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 It's very weird. It's so, uh, do we blame that 70s show for taking Mila Kunis off the market? Totally. Totally. That's, That's exactly that never would have happened. And, he, and then he did that. Then he goes and does Demi Moore while there's still some hotness left there. Hello. A little bit of that. Uh, that um, what, what was the movie she did where she shaved her head? Uh, G.I. Jane. Jane. Yeah. She still had some serious hotness and attitude going there. And I think he got into it there. And then he gets out and goes back to Kunis. Yeah, he, so, he played his cards exactly right. Yeah, and and then you know you got uh, Jimmy Moore's first husband who goes out and uh, and 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 diehards his ass off and uh, and and does what what other movies was he doing that he's still what was his biggest uh, claim to fame? Uh, Bruce actor, Willis. Yeah, I'm thinking of what Bruce does. What is his die another day harder? Harder dies. He I mean, sound like he, terrible pornos. Dude, most of his yeah. new movies, Brett, apparently he's been in like four movies this year. And nobody's week. seen them. Nobody. Nobody's seen them. They're basically pornos with no sex. Like it's that sort of like generic action thing. He's taking on roles. I've heard a couple of them are worthy, but none of them have uh, come to us. But you're right. He's been acting all year, but now he's gone back to Demi Moore. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. So everybody's back in their places. What was, what was it I read the other day? It said Die Hard's a great film, but contrary to the name, nobody dies with an erection. He was. And in, I don't know why I laughed my ass off just reading that. Bruce I'm Willis clear. was in seven that movies this year. Yeah, seven. Cosmic I heard somebody Sin, talking about that. Yeah. Out of Death, Midnight in the Switchgrass. I'm not making any of these up, by the way. Survive no, the uh-uh. Game, Apex, Deadlock, and Fortress, which all sound like I made them up. Yeah. I wonder if we'll ever see them. And, and some the person that told me outside of you said two of them are very good. I don't know which two though that should have been put out and have not been. So I don't know. They say he's, his acting is really good. He signed up for eight movies this year too. They're all direct to video too. This is so weird. I mean, the guy's got game. He does the same kind of thing. Like I loved him in the last boy scout, you know, he's, you know, I, I dig him. I've seen him die, you know, only hard. once. Remember when he die hard, remember <laughs> when they put the cement bucket and they put his feet in the bucket and he got thrown uh, into the water and drowned that way. He was a mobster. 
Do you remember that movie? Mm, he I actually died. That. Bruce Willis has only died, and I know of one movie, and that was it. And I, uh, I wonder if it's because he kind of plays the same guy in every movie. So they yeah. just have all the footage of him, and they just cut to him saying tough guy <laughs> stuff. To, you know, whatever they like. They loop in I'm the audio. Looking up yeah. what movies? What <laughs> movies did Bruce Willis die in? What movies? Y'all are a mess. <laughs> I love how we always have an idea for this show. <laughs> we get on. Yeah, we, had, then, we, said, we, we were like, we were good. had a text string that was like, yeah, we're going to do this, and then we'll do this, and then we'll hit this, and we'll get the sponsors, and if there's time, we'll do this. Here we're yeah. like, what movies did Bruce Willis die in? Yeah, and I, and I got to tell you, we're, we're, we're so far down a weird path right now because you're damn right. None of us are prepared for what the hell we're bringing up, but we were prepared for other things, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, and what did I type in? What movies did Bruce Willis is what I die in? I forgot <laughs> to put the die part. I think that's Bruce an Will- important part of that Google question. Yeah, thank. Oh Wait, you know God. what? Let me tie this back to some relevancy. There should be an Oscars category for best on scene death. Like if you Ooh, die man. in a really good way, because that's, you know, what would you Oscar, pick? So, th- so think of just that category while Steve looks this up. What's the best death of all time in any movie? I can give you mine. The guy in gladiator, when he gets cut in half by the blade on the side of the chariot. Oh, that's badass. Saw that. Yeah. And then they fought the knees and then they, yes. they cut in half. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. Pretty brutal. The one and I think it was, India. it was a chick too. It was a girl. Was it? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember. It was Billy Billy Bathgate is the is the movie that he died in. If you guys huh. ever saw that, and it's no, a mob movie. That. Yeah, Billy Bathgate, and the uh, lead actor is uh, what is his name? Uh, God, he played Tootsie. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman's the bad guy. Ah, so, cool. but he dies in that, and I was like, man, nobody wants to get thrown into a deep, deep, deep lake with you know cement. Yeah, and he put his feet in cement. I thought. I think that's the way to go. Time. And mm-hmm. that's a that's yeah. a whole different discussion. Oh, of he, like, died to to die. Die. He, he died in the Jackal. I love the Jackal. If y'all haven't seen that, that's a 1997 movie. He died in Armageddon. Duh. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a great death. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was dead the whole time in Six Sense. Oh, he didn't really die in that damn. movie. He was yes, just he already did. dead. No, he yeah, was he already okay, dead. Okay, first off. We need to preface this. And they said he died. Spoiler alert. alert. What? Oh, yes. Spoiler alert. (laughs) Spoiler alert. In case you haven't seen the 30-year-old movie. All right. 2019 glass, he dies. Uh, And then the uh, the cold light of day. I didn't know he died in that in 2012. Catch 44. Yep. Gets killed. Uh, Sin City, he dies in. Charlie's Angel. He does die in Sin City. City. Great Sin City. City. And then he dies in Charlie Angel's Full Throttle. In 2000, oh, in Hearts War, <laughs> 202. Uh, so yeah, he's died a bunch. 12 months. Oh, he dies in 12 monkeys. He dies right at the end. Well, he's alive and dead, right? Isn't that the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, it's another weird. It's another weird. One. Nothing's weird. Prequel to Six, Six Sense. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's six movies later. Well, that was a fun rabbit hole to go down. It I want to sure know. Was. I want y'all's best deaths. Now I'm starting to think like the Game of Thrones. Indiana, the John, guy that... Indiana Jones guy whose whose face melts. The he gets the arc of the oh, Covenant. Oh, that's Nazi a great one. guy. The yeah, the Nazi, Nazi guy. guy. Yeah. Yes, oh, and it was the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, uh, comes out and goes right and through him and melts him. Yeah, that made me well, think of Insidious. Good. Was it Insidious Bastards when the bear Jew comes out with the club and just oh, beats the dudes to death? Oh, that one's awesome. Mm-hmm. What yeah, was the one good. with Sylvester okay. Stallone where they were like ice climbers and the chick dies and the guy's holding on to her and goes, don't let her go! Don't let her go! <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> cliffhanger? No. no. Cliffhanger. No. It's cliffhanger. Is that Cliffhanger? Cliffhanger! That's yeah. right. Yeah. Cliffhanger. It's so, like from his like, like over-the-top era where he's yeah, like... Yeah, he's got, he's got her boyfriend yelling at him. He goes, I'm trying to hold on to her, dude. And then she slips, but she had a long enough time where she knew she was about to die, and then she died. I thought that, that was pretty messy. That was that era where him and Schwarzenegger were like neck and they were like competing to be like the big action guy. And I then they opened remember. up Planet Hollywood and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the... Sorry, what, right, Steve. A, by the way, I have that denim jacket still in my collection. <laughs> I have my Planet Hollywood denim jacket, which Brett knows I have. Oh, and it's in pristine condition, and I don't know what it's worth. Nothing. Here's a, here's a fun Schwarzenegger fact before we move on about his him and Stallone's rivalry. The there was a movie called Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. 
which is not a movie I've seen or heard of. It's pretty bad. But Schwarzenegger Mm -hmm. read the script, pretended to be interested. So Stallone would be like, no, I want to do that. That's my, I'm going to do this role. Uh, And he tricked him into doing it. So he did this movie called Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. And then he ran off and got knocked up by Danny DeVito. Yes. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I'm not saying he What a horrible decision. (laughs) Well, there is I Spit on Your Grave. You ever seen that? Oh, that's a fucking crazy movie. What is that? Yeah. the chick gets mad at a dude because he's done some horrible things to her. So she gets in the bathtub with him and she knows she's going to kill him. So she has this dirty, rusty knife hidden under a towel. So they're in the bathtub and she's giving him, you know, a hand job, got him all stiff. And then all of a sudden she grabs the knife and she just does one of those. It is like oh. blood gushing and she cut his penis off. She gets out of the bathtub calmly. He's like freaking out, banging on the door and he bleeds out. It's like the best revenge movie pretty much of all time is pretty much. Yeah, I uh, spit on your grave. So yeah, that that's, one, a, that's that, a nuts flick. Yeah, that one I grabbed my crotch for about two weeks going. Yeah. Oh, we're here. Everything's good. We're okay. We're okay. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, what, one, so. one thing I did want to get into, because uh, Brett was asking me about it, is uh, my life, which is completely flip-flop. Yeah. I used to drive, I used to, drive to work in the dark and come home during the daylight now i drive to work in the daylight and come home in the dark so i went from mornings to afternoons on rock and that is a that's a bizarre change how do you feel about it i mean other than i i know it's like a it's got to be fun in some level right obviously you're with a cool team oh working with axel for those and you you got you both know him he's He's a guy man just he's just a great dude he's been in atlanta on air for 28 years uh, started at 99 X. Uh, he's just, you know, and he and I were the, were the guys that did the most gigs. So I was doing mm-hmm. the most for 96 rock. He was doing the most for 99 X. And the one gig we shared was American pie. I would do it on Friday nights. He would do Sunday afternoons. Is that a club? And he was or... like, li- yeah, he was live wow. on air. And then wow. Friday nights I would host this crazy shit. I mean, I, I own that place from 10 to midnight and we did, what would you do for a thousand dollars? And I'd have 500 people crammed in there watching people do stupid shit for a thousand bucks cash and and, you know it was just fun in all those years i respected him and uh i knew a couple of the guys he worked with because i did college radio with him at Mm 88.5 so i would always like call him or walk up to him and say hey man just introduce myself and then we became friends and he's he's the one dude i liked on on 99x i didn't really care for the morning show of late i've become friends with jimmy but i never really cared for him And, uh, it's just weird. He's the one guy I wanted to work with. There was a hiccup going down years ago where, you know, about three years ago. And I'm like, look, I, you know, I don't care what happens, but I'd love to work with Axel. I know he's in, you know, he's in Cincinnati, still in our air in afternoons. And I was telling my PD, I said, that's the one guy, if I could work with somebody I would want to work with, you know, he and Mike Bell over at, uh, you know, who was on formerly of 790, the zone and on 92.9. I love Mike Bell. Now I'm up against him, but those are two dudes I never got a chance to work with. And now that I'm working with Axel, you know, is he a morning guy? I think he's turning into one. And I'll say that with him probably listening, he's oh. learning, but the guy's the king of the 45 second to two minute break mm-hmm. in afternoons. Cool as crap. Does mm-hmm. great rock interviews. And now he's now, you know, he gets thrown into mornings and still having his other duties. And the guy's having to talk for 15 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I thought he did great. And I think every day he got better and better. It's something that, he wasn't used to. I do. agree. That was my thing is I agree. like Axel to me was like the quintessential, like cool DJ. Like here's this fun music fact or something. Dr. Johnny Fever, about- WKRP hey, in Cincinnati. Yes, Just- that's. Totally coolest dude in the studio by himself mm-hmm. period yeah absolutely yes. uh yeah but just like seeing you know kind of the growth of the show and like you guys kind of start to click and you know it was, it was very cool to listen to um, well i hope so and somebody summed it up today we had a, a caller and it's only our third day in afternoons mm-hmm. um a caller called in and he goes you know what i dig it he goes you know steve's Steve's, you know, and he was giving me credit for being a legend in Atlanta doing this morning radio, whatever. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm actually loving what you're saying, but I got to yeah. say, you're, you okay. got, I got to be like, oh, stop, stop, stop. I, I, first off, I absolutely agree with you. But I can't <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I just wanted to let you know. Hold on for a second. You hit the nail on the fucking head, man. <laughs> Bingo. But, uh, no <laughs> notes. Bingo. No notes. But of course, I'm like, oh, stop, stop. Just stop. No, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so uh, we're sitting there talking. And, and then he says, you know, Axel, but then you come in. And he goes, I know we're not supposed to talk about other people, but he talked about my, uh, my last partner. And he goes, you're the opposite. And tith- you, you know, you're the antithesis of that. You're the opposite of this. You're, you're like totally calm, cool, collected. And he goes, you bring a calmness to, to it. And even to Steve, a moment for us to breathe, there's levity. And he goes, and I just think it works. Mm. And I thought, you know what, man, that was, that was well said. I, I kind of tend to agree with you. So where I think some people don't get it, I do. Now the afternoon gig is, is fun. The only plus to it for me is uh, sleeping. That's, that's what I was, yeah. I was curious about that. Cause I saw that you had posted on your social medias, you know, Steve Rickman, Southside Steve, anywhere you want to follow this guy that your son, Parker, I guess your first day on afternoons was standing here garage. Oh, don't talk going, about this. I can't. I can't dada, this was story, it man. Dada? He was going Dada. Oh, I can't do it. Dada. Come on, and he's in man. the garage Come and he's, on, thinking man. Of, he's thinking I'm home and Amanda and I'm glad you guys have it sounds like you agree with me. Amanda thought, oh, my God, I sent it to you because I thought it was going to be cute. I go, opposite of cute. This is opposite. sad. <laughs> Not cute. It's sad. It broke my damn heart. I looked at Axel. I go, I got to leave. I got to leave. I got to go home. <laughs> Then you might as well send him a video of him at a little league game looking up at the stands and you're not there. Yeah, do that to me, Amanda. Just an empty uh, in, about, <laughs> yeah, in, about a, in about a month when Brooks starts baseball practice and I was a coach. Now oh, I don't shit. think I'm a coach. Uh, I said, Wait, send me a get, picture like, of my son. Yeah, you, not you knowing can't get how like to assistant get his coach? glove on. Like a first base. I'm coach? hoping. I, I hope I'm a game day coach. A game day coach. All right. A catcher, Can I toss out? The, coach? the head coach gets three assistant coaches that he can put in jerseys and hats. And I want to be that guy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if anybody I'm talking to Hopewell baseball, yeah, I'm coming after you. <laughs> I want to be that guy. Uh, but I want to be, you know, a guy that's there on, on game day, which is always Saturday. So, which is cool. I can do those, but man, the practice thing kills me. This kills mm-hmm. me that I can't yeah. be there. And that, but then I took a step back, you know, and I'm like, all right, how does this make me feel? First off, my kids in the afternoon, it's real. They're plugged in, they're running around. It's a lot. And then you got uh, either we're on our own because it's a rainy day or cold or whatever, or there's a play date, you know, and you're trying to deal with that. Then there's, okay, let's wrangle them in. Let's get everybody in their chairs. Not the easiest thing when you have two kids, get them fed, then get them upstairs, do their bath, which I always do and get them bathed, which can be great and quick and easy, or it could be a disaster where I'm like, please don't let the roof fall in below us. Please don't let the, there's enough water <laughs> everywhere on the floor. <laughs> and, and then there's getting them out, getting them dressed, and they like to play a little once they get their matchy pajamas. And then there's get one in one room asleep and then get the four-year-old asleep. And Amanda's having to do all that by herself. And I'm like, Okay, but then I look at men out there, God bless everybody that's not in our industry that works seven to seven. There's dudes that leave their house and come home when I'm coming home, and yet I got the morning. I don't have to leave here until about 1.30. I can be at the house. Hmm. So I'm like, I still i am only gone for four hours plus the drive, you know, but I, believe it or not, I go in an hour early for a show on afternoons. I, I do. I couldn't I believe it. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've worked with you mornings now, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Steve, right there at like five fifty. You know, he's ready to go. He's he's bright. Five fifty. Five fifty. This oh, it's, week, it's clockwork. It's, it's clockwork. Like one thirty. No, he early, early. He's there. He's shaking hands. Uh-huh. He's kissing everyone's. You know, he's he's part of the office. Everyone's life. kissing what? The, the We're not a lot of kids. We're wearing masks. Brad. That's right. We're you can't kiss. Masks. We don't have HR anymore, though. They did get rid of that. Yeah, thank God. And I talked to HR this week and I called Joyce and said, I'm going to miss you. Just know I'm going to be touching everybody now that you're gone. If I was single, I'd be like, line up, ladies. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's weird, though. For me, it is the the missing the kids. But mm-hmm. again, it's hard to complain when when so many fathers don't get to see their kids. But I've been around them the whole time. So to get yanked off something I've done for 24 years, which is mornings, was tough. Mm-hmm. We well, really started on afternoons, easy. though, right? 
Yeah, I did afternoons in 2004 and five. It was Southside and Rhodes was the name of the show. So Tim Rhodes and a lot of, you know, that got referenced a few times this mm-hmm. week. And Axel's like, ah, because we were up against Axel back then. <laughs> uh, but we did, we did bitch slap trivia. We did booger baseball. I mean, we were doing crazy crap. We even had producers. We put them through it. We had one producer. We bubble wrapped him. And Patrick Kearney was a regular on our show. We played bitch slap trivia with him where it was me against him and dude, whoever got the answer, got to slap the other dude by jaw to this day, still dislocated. At nine. <laughs> oh, God, Patrick hit me so damn hard. I, I thought I was knocked out and, uh, I hit him hard too. So I had it coming, but then, you know, we had, uh, we'd wrap our producers in bubble wrap and let, we let Patrick get in a stance and do a full on rushing hit. He tackled him. He knocked that guy 15 yards, I know, down the hallway, and he rolled in the bubble wrap. Then we pushed him down the stairs. Then we let John Rocker throw a baseball. He was on the show as hard as he could with a guy in bubble wrap with a catcher's mask on. He had just had to stand there. And Rocker beamed him with a, like, 80-mile-an-hour, 90-mile-an-hour baseball. And I was Jesus! Like, oh, yeah, I was so, going to say, it was a cur- uh, change-up if it was 80. Well, Rocker was he bringing threw- it, like, high 90s. He threw one and it stuck in the wall in the sheetrock. The ball was halfway in, <laughs> stuck, just like you see somebody throw a tennis ball and it gets stuck in a fence, stuck in the wall. So I had him autograph it, and then of course some douchebag pushed it in through the sheetrock after about six months. But it was there for a while. But you know that's the kind of shit we were doing. And uh, now you know the world's changed a little bit. But it is weird being back in afternoons. I just I just hate it for the kids. If the kids were older, I wouldn't sweat it. If I was single or it was just Amanda and I, I wouldn't sweat it. Mm-hmm. But I only sweat it because of 19 months and four year old. That's the only reason. Well, it's, so that's, it's a, that's the downside. It's change. I mean, everybody goes through, I think, professionally, personally, throughout your life. I mean, you're swinging at curveballs. I, I can tell you, you can, I can look at a year and say there's going to be two or three months that are going to be tough. There are going to be two or three months that are going to be great. And when I'm going through a tough month, I know that I'm going to come up at some point on great. And it kind of is just ebb and flows. Mm. Brando no, flows. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's Evan, yeah, Brando, flows. please. Yeah, not Evan. Yeah. It's Brando. <laughs> it Brando. It Brando. Yeah. Well, and, and Brent and I have both done the that that shit before too. So you like you'll find stuff you don't like about it as it goes on, and you'll find stuff you do like about it as it goes on. You know, you'll be like, ah, man, it does suck. I can't join a beer league football team or whatever, but I can make it to karaoke on Thursday or whatever it is. You know, not not that you're it's out doing single. Care. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a single man's gig. You were perfect for it. Evan. I had a great time. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be honest with you, when you're gigging like I was in in the, the rock days, you you have an eight o'clock promotion or nine o'clock, and you just go straight from the studio. You talk, hey, I'll be out there in an hour, which sounds cool. I'm headed to such and such bar for Miller Lite, Budweiser, Coors Light, whoever I was working for, Jack Daniels, and you head out there, and then people are waiting on you. Get there early, you have some dinner, and it just flows the next thing yeah. you know you're home at one o'clock and you're like what's your name you know what names don't matter <laughs> uh, i'm gonna forget and, yeah i'm gonna forget and that what's that your address a lot. calling a cab that's one reason why i have high numbers because i think i was having sex with strangers like two or three days a week um Real but sad. <laughs> but it was fun i was single i could do that but uh now it's like yeah it's i don't want it but the only downside to mornings is the wake up. Other than mm. that, you feel like you got your day done. You feel like you're on top of it. You're ahead of everybody else. You're talking when some people you're two hours into your show and people are just waking up and you're like, I've got the world by the balls. And then you're coming home and you're home at 11. You got the rest of your day. The only oh, problem yeah. is you, you get a little tired. So make no mistake about it. I'm a morning man. And I'll, I'll say this to my boss or to Axel or anybody. And I think we all agree. The cool thing is, I'm, I'm dealing with two cool individuals in Axel and Mo, and we've all said to each other, we're happy in afternoons. We're happy in mornings. We're all up for either. Nobody's poo pooing any of it. Um, but I, I obviously would like to get back to mornings. Hmm. So we'll see what happens, but we have a new show starting. I can't talk about it. We could, um, but it'll start here probably in uh, less than a week. And, oh, wow, uh, and that's we'll it. You know, and I want nothing but the best for Rock 100.5. That's, you know, and I want nothing for the best that everybody works in that damn building. And unbeknownst to him, I will tell you, Brett Barney, Axel is going on vacation next Thursday and Friday. I don't have those dates. It's leading up to President's Day. 
I think it's the 17th. I don't don't know. I have to look at a calendar if you're looking at one. But I am asking you already to run our board and be an air personality on uh, Axel and Southside next Thursday and Friday. Asking Brett? I'm asking you. Yeah, the guy, the guy with no <laughs> deal with that company anymore that got let go two no. years ago. I'm asking, I'm asking Evan uh, Brando. Yeah, that sounds like a great time. All right, you kidding well, guess me? Guess what? You'll be on Rock 100.5 next Thursday and next Friday. So listen to Brando. No oh, stranger damn. to it. I mean, you did the uh, the Cage Show, Cage yeah. Cult Show, two years. Yeah, and you worked fun. with us in mornings, and a lot of people liked you in the mornings. By the way, I had a Not great me. time. Not Brett. Brett was a very, if you go to, if you went to the rock Twitter, it was Brett was every morning. It was like, get that fucking douche off. Brett, do you think it should have been you? Cause you're more people that don't know. I mean, obviously you guys both great writers, uh, Brett, I'll give you the uppercut on the writing. You're, uh, oh, you're I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it at all. <laughs> I will, I'll honestly say so when the whole, but Evan is so great digitally. Well, thank oh, you. Light years ahead just of me. a love fest. Baby. Light, light years, light years ahead oh. of you there. Yeah. Um, so I've got the best of both worlds in the two of you. And I also saw the talent in both of you. So I'll be honest with the yet. Yeah, come on show. If you're wondering who the best two dudes at Cumulus were, I've got them right oh, there. Shucks. Well, if you want to know how we ended up eating uh ball sack deodorant or any of that, those were all ideas that I came up with. And then I would go find Evan in the office and pitch it to him <laughs> and say, that's, that's- see, I would see his reaction going, Will this be funny on the podcast? So he's kind of been a part of the podcast for years because I'd I'd use him kind of just to bounce ideas off of all the time. Brett was yeah. mostly just looking to kill time at work. Uh, you know what? And that's fine. Brett did walk around with some kill time. I like it. <laughs> that's what you do. But Brett, hold on. Not your fault. Not your fault. You were in a position where it's so funny when the pandemic hits. They're <laughs> so like, well, Brett's too talented to let go, but we don't have anything for him. Let's keep him. And then mm-hmm. they laid you off and then evan you went through that too yeah i was for load for a little while and then they were like well we don't yeah well then they did fire me after a couple after uh in like august or something and then brought me back we got fired on the same day actually evan called me and Quiz. gave me a heads up and then when the next morning when i got the call which i didn't answer um oh that's right I you was, got a super early yeah. call, right you i got an early call too yeah uh, from our from our, our boss and market manager, which was really nice to do like a personal call instead of just like a, we regret this termination, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a tough spot. Nobody wants to cut anybody. Oh, yeah. People understand. <laughs> you know, it, it, it sucks, but both of y'all are talented and that's why you're both still working. It just yeah, takes a second. I remember, I remember just last note on that being like, you know, Brandon, we love you. We think you do good work. But we will bring you back if we can, but we just can't. And I remember being like, all right, that's, bullshit dude i get like you don't have to spare me and then in february they were like actually we'd love to have you back if you're free and i'd be like all right well here i come ah you got me yeah my story was different i and asked the uh gm to go to dinner and we went out to dinner together this was after playing golf and i pitched him an idea for a company i was thinking about starting and he loved it and as i was sitting there i got a job offer and it's my current job and he looked at me and was like would you ever think of coming back? And I said, you can't fucking afford me. Uh, that's funny. Just to be an asshole. And then we both laughed about it and he bought my dinner and beers and we had a good time, but uh, it was what, a joke. That's what, you do. that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got to set that mark. You know, there comes a point in time in this business, even with uh, people doing three and four jobs or cutbacks and things. If you're good at what you do and, and you're proven you're young or old, uh, you're, you're worth the money, you know, uh, and there's something to be said for that. I think the larger point to tie this all to put a finer point on it is that it's very helpful to be able to be flexible because it's crazy out there y'all. So whether you're a mornings guy now suddenly doing afternoons or an afternoons guy now suddenly doing mornings, it helps to just go with the flow. Yeah. And I will tell those, and it's such a small percentage, but I'll most, most people will wait to run into me or even friends and they'll say something nice or, Oh, this is great or cool. I saw that. But then there's the people that respond in my heart. You know, I appreciate it. I don't know what the percentage of people that get on your socials and say things, but then there's even that sliver of a percentage that just doesn't get it and says things to me like, dude, you need to bow up. You've been doing this long enough. Why are you taking this crap? Look, first off, you need to tell them you need to be back all mornings. I'm like, okay, here's the deal. What you don't get 
it's a corporate world out there and you know, you don't understand and we have contracts and things that go on and you don't get to bully people. You know, you can, you can suggest what you think is best. You can talk about it. People can regret their decision and move you back or hire you back, but it, it you're a cog in the wheel, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and that's what it is. And, uh, guess what? I I'm not in charge mm -hmm. by a long shot. And you know what? I'm just glad to be here. You know, it's funny when you say that it, it, it brings up memories when I used to be doing like call screening on Shannon Burke show and somebody would be offended by something that was said on air and they would call in the show. I would answer the phone. They'd rag into me meaning and, and it could be over anything. It could be, we added somebody new or this, this or that, or they didn't like this on the station and they would just go on and on and on and on and on and rip me. And I would finally hit a point and I would say this to many people. Do you think the guy that just answered a phone <laughs> is somebody that can make any kind of decision on what this station is doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was yeah. my think about it. Oh yeah. Think about it. Yeah, exactly. Just like when Rodney Ho with the AJC calls and asked me for a statement, I'm like, dude, I am under contract. I, my bosses have said, you can or you can't you right now for? they're saying yeah they're saying you can't respond don't respond guess what i'm not going to respond so when you put in the paper south side steve was contacted but gave no response <laughs> no shit okay yeah, i was I asked mean, <laughs> but it's not like you're not talking about it by the way anybody who knows you or cares about your opinion can go on your instagram and see a video of you saying hey we're having a good time or can even listen to this podcast and be like oh all right well he said, I don't, no comment. No comment. Like I'm some jerk. Like I'm also, some a-hole. <laughs> you know, like I live high on the hill with a giant gate. Uh, you know, and it's, I didn't even tell you that I wasn't going to talk. My assistant came and told you I That's wasn't right. going to talk. Red Party and I dressed identically. We're like, uh, so he, he can't see you. Yeah. Wait, if, if it was Rodney Ho, it would be Brent barney oh that's right the two times i've been published yeah. with the wrong name yeah. and the other <laughs> uh, other one was a misquote which kind of pissed me off because that was about mike brooks and it was like he oh. brought us free shit and i'm like no what i said is he was the kind of guy that loved everybody and you know he didn't bring one person a christmas present he'd bring the whole team a christmas present mm -hmm. Yeah, people don't even realize you had made it. You you had a cooler for him with his name written on it. You never even had a chance to give him because he passed away. Oh, really? So, yeah. yeah, which uh, is a lot of people don't realize that man. Brett had a gift for him and just hadn't seen him to give it to him. So they had no idea of his relationship. I mean, hell, I'm the one that got him hired over there, at least got him the and, and I told him, I said, I don't get people hired. I got you the interview. I got you the you, you, your skills got you the job. <laughs> Uh, but he, Brooks was just that kind of guy, you know, but you, you look at all the people that we've known and the things that we do, and I'm not even going after Rodney Ho. I'm just telling you, dude, I remember the old days where I could give you a quote. I can't now mm -hmm. uh, things have changed. And, and he's also been cool and not said things when I've said off the record, but now I can't talk to him off the record because I'm too scared. It'll get on the record mm -hmm. and then I'm in trouble. So it's yeah. just, you just, you just can't talk. Just take our statement from our bosses. Radio is a funky thing. But the good thing about these podcasts, we can tell you a little bit more. But make no mistake about it. We all work for, for large corporations, all three of us, involved in the entertainment industry. And what, all we do is love to entertain us, what we do. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I the love the road. Is just, we just got to get around yeah. it so we can do we what do. we like. That's it. And that's the way it rolls. And uh, speaking of red tape, right now we got to thank some people because, uh, hey, we got people taking care of us to give you this podcast. Again, it's the Yet Come On Show, show 119. I'm Southside Steve. That's Brett Barney. That's Brando. And I want to thank JoeBees.com. Joe Bees is bee pollen. And let me tell you one thing. You need to take your Joe Bees. I take it every day, two capsules, and uh, it can help with seasonal allergies. It helps with uh, digestion. It helps with energy. Definitely the energy I feel. Uh, give them a call or go to joebees.com. 877-300-5632 uh, is the phone number. Oxygenfinancial.com. Ted Jenkins, he's a guy who can help you financially. It's tough out there, man. And it's not just about what you invest in. It's when you sell, when you buy. He can handle that for you. Circle285.com for all your insurance needs. I can tell you right now, I was that guy. I was loyal to two insurance companies uh, in my life. One is a teenager through my... 30s than the other from the 30s to present and i'm like 
I'm not getting the coverage I deserve. I'm paying too much. Circle 285 gets you free quotes. So circle285.com and they'll align you with a company and save you money guaranteed. And Ridgeline Counseling, Dr. Dave Markwell, especially uh, in these days, <laughs> I think a lot of people have needed counseling. And I think counseling only makes you better. It's not a weakness. It means you want to work on you and make yourself a better you. And if you got anything in your head, get it out. Dave Markwell, talk to you in person or on Zoom. We'll be right back with the Yet yeah, Come On show in two seconds. And we're back. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I'm, keeping, I'm keeping that in the I'm keeping that. That's it is the yeah come on show <laughs> i'm so sorry Steve. that That's may Brent be the party. best thing you've so good. Go. good there you go we should peel the curtain back on that one and be like so <laughs> i don't know if people notice like i guess evan what'd you do on the video last week last week we, did so the- we, we had a commercial and i just had a and now a word from our sponsors and then afterwards i was like and now back to the yeah come on variety hour and then on and the I- audio <laughs> On I enjoyed the audio, that. On the audio, I did a knife, knife's going ching ching, and then Steve's lead, and then it comes out to a gong. <laughs> it just rang out for like seven seconds for no reason. It's awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, there thanks. you go. There's the there, there's the quickie version. <laughs> I will tell you as we as we laugh out loud at ourselves. Uh, the Yet Come On Show has got a special uh, subject. It's your subject too. It is the Super Bowl. Yeah. It is the end of the NFL uh, for uh, this season, and, uh, it's, and, and it's big. The big the season question, finale. Yeah, it's the big season, but we'll call it the, the big, big game because I don't think I'm allowed game. to call it the, the SB. Do you so, have the express written consent of the NFL, Steve? I, I do not. I'll call it the big game the rest of the time. But <laughs> all of us people, when we talk, we do say the actual title, which I think they want us to. I just can't say it if I'm being – I don't know. I don't know. So I want to say it's it's just if you're advertising. Yeah. It's in like a live read or something. Yeah. This is not advertising. This is us just talking. So I'll call it the SB. Uh, You can. (laughs) Or or the SB. Or the season finale. The season finale of football. Season finale. So we've got two teams playing. Should they be there? Absolutely not. Neither of these teams can be in. No, right, what's in your no, cup, man? No, I don't know, Jack. I've also been talking already for five hours today. Just, oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm warmed up. I'm warmed up. But I will tell you that, no, they shouldn't. This is like, if this was a game, and I like it, our guest last week said if it was on in a sports bar, you wouldn't even put volume You wouldn't turn it. the sound on. That's, yeah. that's, that's so, a good line. And, and, and I agree. I like the Rams. I could give an S about the Bengals. I like, uh, I like their quarterback. I think it's cool. He's a little Heisman guy. He's an LSU quarterback. That's badass. But uh, I, I don't really care outside. I think Chase and Mixon are worth watching, but it's not a team I care about. I don't even like the way their team looks. I hate the Bengal Tiger. I don't want to see tiger stripes on the side of your pants. It looks like it looks like football in 2050. Am I, I mean, am I wrong? It's the future of uniforms. We're not there yet. You're damn it right it is. Brett, do you remember yeah. in the 2000s when the uh, baseball did the like future jerseys? Like the early 2000s? You mean when the Orioles had the jerseys in Braille? No, uh, I don't think. Maybe. No, these are like, they did like flash forward jerseys. It doesn't matter. This isn't important. I was just saying it kind of looks like that. It does. It looks like that. You know, if you see on any given Sunday, it is the future of uniforms. If you Mm -hmm. watch that movie, because they couldn't use them with Al Pacino. But I, I will say that. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to bet on it. So the main thing to talk about is anytime you have one of these games is which team do you favor talking to our, our guest last week. And uh, his name again, escapes me. Mark Zeno. Mark, Mark Zeno. Zeno. I, that guy was I a great Mark. guest. Yeah. I loved Mark. I thought he was fantastic. I love the intensity. That dude is so intense. I loved it. I don't think I want to be roommates with him, but I love talking to him. Yeah. Super intelligent. I don't think he blinked one time during that entire no. podcast. No, it's a rare individual. And like you said, some people are called to duty and some people duty. And I, do. I mean, he's military. I just, I just sleep with their eyes open. open. Oh, yeah. No, I can't wait to have him on again. He was great for sure. No, and I, I would love to have him on again. But again, y'all missed it. All I know how to do is go duty. Oh, that's he, good. Uh, he's miss called that. to duty. Yeah. See, I'm too quick for you bitches tonight. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real sophisticated. Dude, I love this humor. Yeah. But, but I'll tell you that, you know, for me, 
I'm just like, oh my God, this dude's so, so effing cool. I like, I got a man crush on him. I'm like, I'll be your bitch. But, uh, yeah, uh, but you know, when, when I, when I hear him talk the way he talked, I'm like, he's making a lot of sense. This is a BS game. You know, I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> but I don't know who I'm cheering for. Who do you guys think are going to win? Uh, I'm pulling for the Rams. I, although I think the Bengals are going to win because the Bengals have been winning games. They shouldn't have won all season. And that is just what good teams do. Okay, no, you're right. It's part of it. Let's think about this year. Braves haven't won in forever, right? They get the win. Oh, Brad, this is a conspiracy. UGA brain. hasn't won in forever. They get the win. Cincinnati. Yeah. Now, first off, you can argue this in so many ways. Well, the Braves paid for their championship, and the Rams are trying to do the same thing with picking up OBJ and – they're trying to get through on that kind of route, just paying in. Well, for they a made win. a quarterback. They made a quarterback swap too. I mean, they did everything yeah. that they could, you know. And they've got probably. I mean, I don't know. I think I, I don't know all the statistics, but don't, don't they have the best wide receiver in, in Cup? I mean, yes, he, yeah, he, Cooper he's Cup. He's the best. Crown. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is he? I mean, does he have the most receiving yards? I didn't know if he was that guy, but he's mm-hmm. definitely. I think if you talk to anybody, they're like, yeah, Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He's Cup is the guy, and there's the whole thing where even in preseason, he was getting up at 5 a.m. with Stafford, and they were having breakfast every day and working on everything together. And there's the whole thing about how Sean McVay, local boy, went to Marius, and his uh, dad worked over at Cox in the building. Hmm. Uh, how him and Stafford have been friends forever because they're Georgia boys, and they were in, like, Cancun or – Punta Vallarta or wherever, I don't know, in Mexico on a vacation together when the trade went down with their wives. So, yeah, their team has a lot of chemistry and whatnot going on. I'm still going for Cincinnati. I would love to see Cincinnati at least cover the four to three and a half, whatever it is. I know I'll be in Vegas, so I'm going to be betting on this, which is a random thing that just came up. Oh, yeah. Uh, Screw you. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Brett and his connections. Hi, Brett. Uh, this is your boss. Can you go to Vegas and cover the Super Bowl for me? <laughs> Brett. Fuck you. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, gee, I, I'll have to move some things around. I, I guess oh, I could probably. It was it was much different. It was I got a text message. Hey, uh, meet me in the CEO's office. And I was like, uh oh. And so I walk <laughs> in and fired like, again. <laughs> That's kind of what I thought. I was like, do we need to wait on HR to come in? Because we still have that. And sorry, I didn't mean that to be a shot. I like Joyce. Um, they he comes he's still in, he's there. Like, yeah, Our he, HR, well, they're just not doing HR anymore. Just to clarify, they're, they're still there. Nobody's been cut. They're just oh, okay. doing their job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I came in and was like, "Hey, this is a good thing. I'm just gonna let you know we have an open slot. If you want to come out to Vegas with us, we'll fly you out Friday. It's a small team. There's like 12 of us going, and it's all the uh, executive team and management." And they're, they're like, we'll fly you out. We'll put you up. We'll take you out to dinner, do all this stuff. It's me and another guy. Actually, it's a stoner Jerry from the regular guys. It was oh, wow. the two of us going. And oh, uh, Mark oh. Owens, who was on the show. And they're Mark's like, Mark's yeah. going too? Yep. There, he's like, we'll hey, put you all two, up. Two of our regular guys, guys. Yeah. Yep. We'll put you all up. We'll take you to George Strait on uh, Saturday. And we've got you set up for a private party at a, uh, at Circa Sportsbook in old Vegas or, you know, the old strip Sunday night. And then we'll fly you back Monday. It's like, but what's your job? What's your job? What do you do when you're there? <laughs> Dude, literally my I get, job. I get the entertainment just have and the party. Fun. Wait, you're not getting audio or interviews or anything. Nothing, nothing. My job is to entertain. All right, I went to the Super Bowl. Let me, matter of fact, hold on. You got to remember, the, the Super Bowl is in L.A., not Vegas. It is, but how far of a drive is that? Oh, that's a drunk decision. Oh, you're doing it. I bet you. Hold on. Ooh. Wait, you're going to the – oh, yeah, that's – I could okay, drive on. to that's, the Super Bowl. That is not that far. That's – how long of a drive is that? But what, like probably like three and a half hours? I out, was thinking, Atlanta yeah, got to Tuscaloosa. be four hours maybe. Yeah. I've got my uh, I, I got the same kind of deal as Brett did for this Super Bowl. I got to go oh. to the uh, Atlanta Falcons uh, versus the Denver Broncos in Miami. So they take us down there. This, by the way, uh, was in my seat, my front row seat. Whoa! On the, yeah, on the twenty-eight yard line. Holy uh, cow! 
So I don't know what that seat was worth. I don't know what front row seats are worth, but I was, it was given to me by uh, Miller Lite. And let me tell you, man, it was like the greatest gift ever in the history of ever. And uh, they only had one ticket and there were three of us on the morning show. Well, actually four of us there. And we were there for 10 days uh, in Miami, but we had work to do, Brett. We had interviews to do. We did our morning show live. We were bringing on whoever was in town famous from wrestlers to former football players. I had to host a hall of famer thing. I mean, there was a lot going on. Okay. Uh, and then Brett gets to just go for fun. You're yeah. kidding. Me. You yep. guys want to do prices right real quick for a, not a front row seat, but approximately 28 yard line. Uh, it's four, four rows back price, right? Highest without going over. Uh, one seat. time out I'm before go, you I'm, what are you looking seven, at uh ticket master okay i'm gonna say um uh, i gotta go thirty thousand. i'm thinking i you were gonna say 17 so i'm gonna go lower than you i'm gonna go i was um thirty thousand and one dollar i'm just kidding no seventeen thousand. <laughs> uh little lower than that it's 10 grand seven hundred ten thousand seven hundred fifty dollars but see here's you the problem you have to buy two you have to buy two so. Now, are you you're looking at face? Those seats are already gone. No, so you these seats be, are, you can buy these right now. So there's a secondary because what I saw earlier in the week was like thirty to forty. Holy oh, shit, so you've bro. been pricing them always. You're thinking about it, you're like, honey. honey. Yeah, these are <laughs> these are verified resales, is what these are. So mm. if you want to be right no, there, that's... but close. Actually, here we go. There's a front row. Front. Holy cow! All right, front row. <laughs> All right, yeah, thirty. Your first ones were a little closer, yeah. For front row, thirty thousand. I'm gonna Brett, say thirty-eight thousand five hundred and sixty-seven. Brett gets it. It's forty thousand six hundred and forty-seven dollars. Yeah, and that's and again, what you I have to me. buy two. You can only buy one, or you you have to buy two. You can't just buy one. And the dude I was sitting next to was so funny because he's on the front row and his brother's on the front row, and he'd gotten there early. And I said, "Where's your brother?" He goes. Uh, he's a big business guy. And I'm like, how old are you? You know? And I was like, I don't know what I was. I was in my thirties. And uh, he's like, well, I'm, I'm 25. And I go, can he goes, can you believe we're sitting in these seats? I go, yeah. Could we buy a car if we sold these seats? He goes, oh yeah. He goes, this is the car. We're sitting in a car. And then I go, what does your brother do? He goes, I don't really ask too many questions. I just knew he bought me a ticket. I'm like, oh, it's just awesome. Cocaine like, cowboy. I'm like, where is the gangster man at? You know, what does he do? He came down and he was slick. When I looked at him, I'm like, yeah, I'm not talking to you. I'm just going to talk to your dumbass brother who's sitting next to me. But uh, yeah, I was by myself and I was like, you know what? I don't need anybody to go into the game with. And it was so cool because of the regular guy's connection. I walked in to the game with Kevin of Kevin and Bean, uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla. And those are the three dudes I was walking in with. And we had been with Ben Stein, who was down there, because at the time Jimmy Kimmel was doing uh, Ben Stein, win Ben Stein's money, um, helping co-host that. I had no idea what those guys were going to grow into. It was a trip to be around them, but we were around them the whole damn time. But they knew them from L.A., so I just kind of befriended them and, and hung out. So, but it was weird walking in. We all walked in together, and they went up to some higher seats. And they go, "Where are you headed?" I'm like, "Front row." <laughs> I got better wow. seats than you guys. He flexed but it, on it the was man only, show. <laughs> yeah, they were doing. They were doing. Yeah, I did flex on the man show. I'm like, go ahead, bounce on a trampoline. Look at my shit. <laughs> but uh, but you know, it was it was a blast. But of course, Falcons lost. That hurt like hell. Well, uh, but it, it is what it is. And, and some people, but you look at these two teams. Rams have been there before. I mean, obviously, won one in St. Louis for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of their history when they were in LA. I don't know what game, how many times they've won the Super Bowl or have they? I know Cincinnati's never won it. They've been Minnesota twice State. though before, both against the 49ers and lost. 89 was the last time they were there. I know that. I'm no statistician. Statistic, what's the word? Statistic. Statistic. Thank you. Thank well, you. That's right. uh, Rams won yeah. the Super Bowl in 2000. That's it? So when they were in St. Louis, that's their only win. They never won as the Los Angeles Rams. I don't and that was here in Atlanta so. at the Georgia Dome. Yeah, it was. Tennessee no, Titans. Definitely not as the LA Rams. It was. It was. It was, you know, so they won as St. Louis. So, shit, they're looking for a first-time win, too. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what What are the uh, – just in discussion quickly, what are some good prop bets? Anybody got any? Uh, I think Brett's Gatorade won. Oh. oh, yeah. Because I know we talked about it. We talked about it last week, but now we're a week more into yeah, we're, it we're up against is. the yeah 
Okay, so I'm going to toss you guys one that I heard this morning. Um, this is actually like a really random sports gambler kind of thing. So I don't know if you know this, but usually a player, when they have a child, is more likely to score a touchdown. It just so happens that Odell Beckham Jr. is having his first child this week. The child is supposed to come on Friday or Saturday. Now, if you're going to bet on somebody to score a touchdown, Odell Beckham Jr., just to score a touchdown, plus 120 right now, looked it up today, that's a good bet to make. Huh. He'll get in there. He'll do the cradle, the baby. Come on now. You know they're going to try and give him some love for his first kid. If, if they can. Yeah, that's that's true, actually. That's a hmm. – but here's the other thing. You look at how what a dominant guy he was in the NFL, but since being on this team, he's good for three, maybe four catches a game. Most of the time, two catches if you look at his season. So I'm like, you know, this dude doesn't score a whole lot, doesn't get the ball a whole lot. I think, I think, I think you're do. thinking this wrong. You're thinking this wrong. When he was at – uh, where did he come from? He came from New York, right? Yeah, New York. Yeah, yeah. he was a – well, no, uh, no, he was somewhere uh, before Browns. the Browns. He, he was on the yeah, Browns. Then he played Browns. So with the Browns just earlier this season, I want to say it was like 10 weeks or whatever. He had one touchdown. His first four weeks at LA, he had three touchdowns in the first four weeks. But that's less than one a game, but then Cup's getting two a game. You know, so it's different. Yeah, that's fine. But Cup's a favorite. I think he's like minus 120 or minus 130. Yeah. So you're going to want to go for, I mean, you're talking 13 or $1.30 to a dollar that you're gonna have to put in. So I would rather go with somebody And this is just, just to score a touchdown. Now yeah. for him to score the first one is plus eight fifty. So I'm going to definitely jump on that one too, because that's $8 and 50 cents to every dollar I put in. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with five and $10 bets to win some, some decent money on those. I like the long shots. I like doing about a hundred bucks on the super bowl, doing the five and $10 on the long shots. Just hoping if even three of them hit, you get your money back plus. Bingo. So that, and that's, see, that's the way I roll. You and I think the same way on that. If I can kind of space them out, make a minimal, but with bigger game potential, I'm good to go. As long as one or two of those hit, you, you're good to go. You're good. Yeah. You at least yeah, you, cover you And if the second one hits, now you're sitting flush you're sitting you're sitting pretty uh well we're winding up uh yeah come on show show 119 um anybody have anything they want to add or bring in i'm just just wondering what's what's the look i was gonna throw it out to evan because i know he was saying he was thinking about throwing a party this week yeah i mean just real quick if we've got some time i uh go I, ahead you want to throw a super bowl party let's discuss. yeah well so none of my friends were doing one i was like well, how have we not planned this yet so i'm it's kind of being pushed on me to, to throw the Super Bowl, which I'm totally fine with. I like to host. Uh, but what are some tips for like, how do I throw the best Super Bowl party I can? What are some, how do I avoid, what do I avoid? You know, what snacks do I need to make sure I have? Should I just provide everyone snacks and ask everyone to just throw me five, 10 bucks? Well, I've done Super Bowl parties at my uh, different apartments, you know, back in my single days, I've hosted probably four or five. And then I used to do them at my bar. Mm. The bar, uh, which was cool, you know, when you own a bar and you do a Super Bowl thing, you do it a little oh, different. Yeah. But if you want, you can go out. If you really want to be cool, go get the plates and the balloons. They have them. There, there'll be the logos. If you want to get some logo plates and cups for both teams, mm. that's fun. A uh, little something that people will notice and be like, damn, damn, damn. A lot of people like to smoke. I have screwed up and allowed people to smoke cigars in my apartment in Chambly. And I think three months later, I, I finally quit smelling cigar smoke. So you need to have a smoking area. If people are going to smoke and okay. you need to have a TV dedicated out there. stogie area. We can do that. And it needs to, it needs to be outdoor, have a TV. So what you need is you need at least three multiple TV areas. You need a TV in the area of the kitchen where people are going to be hanging out and eating. Then you need a kitchen in the big room where everybody on couches, chairs, pulling up, sitting on the carpet. And then if you have a smoke room outdoors or like you pop up a garage and you got a TV in the garage or something, then you got a smoking area. If you have that patio, whatever that, that, that would be my suggestion. Huh? This is, that's eventually really good advice. I was expecting some like goof off advice, but th this is really funny. That's great. Well, advice. No, Brett, I went to Brett, one of Brett's party. He had a whack off room. I didn't know why I went in it <laughs> for whacking off and Steve, obviously <laughs> what do you mean? I was why? like, there's lotion, there's tape, paper, and, and it's called the wacky room. And I'm like, what am I doing? What I don't need this right now. I'm okay. I'm watching football. Well, it's you like the smoking you, room. You might not smoke, but someone else might. 
You didn't yeah. read the full name. It was called the Wacky Tobacky Room. It was no, cigars or, room. yeah, you could take a puff, take a pull, you know, whatever you needed. It was for everybody. It's 2022. <laughs> we are all inclusive now. Yeah. But if you identify oh, by as the a way, smoker or a meat, like Pee Wee Herman, you're yeah, good. All right, there you go. And by the way, since you brought that up, that's funny. No <laughs> drugs, man. Just tell people, say, look, you're not bringing any anything that goes up your nose or you rolled or, you know, I don't care if you eat an edible at my house, but nobody's smoking dope. Just say, look, this is not drugs. Here's what Super Bowl is. Super Bowl is cigars, beer, and liquor. That's all mm. it is. That's it. No need for drugs. You don't need the one neighbor five houses down going, they're smoking pot. You know, mm. whatever. I'm just saying that wherever you live. So I would put a poo poo on that. You know, you're, you're coming over here. You're a little redneck. You drink your beer, have some chips, have lots of chips. Uh, you can even go old school and have the, uh, the, the ruffles with the French onion dip. I love a ruffle with the French onion dip. Uh, see, that's that's a, that's a, I do. All star play. Do that. Do that for sure. Uh, have a, a charcuterie charcuterie board. If you really want to be, is snazzy. it too fancy for Super Bowl? It's like smoke. It's like, is that the vibe? No, Dude. that's for the girls. Beanie, uh, beanie girls on beanie weenies. Yeah, beanie weenies. No, no. no, but he's right though. He's right for the girls. And matter of fact, you can even say, you know, when people come in, say, look, there's a chip table and a charcuterie board. Mm -hmm. Guys are chips. Girls have that. Boys, we got your cool ranch over here. Girls, we got your goudas. We're good to go. <laughs> Thank you. And that's what and that's what you do. And uh, wine. But when you get in a big party, you don't want the spills of wine, beer, mm. anything clear is usually good liquor, but you start getting red wine spills. That's a problem. And it smells forever. Mm. Flip it to champagne. You get some cheap champagne. Yeah. You get some like Josh for like 10 bucks. So why would you want champagne unless you're cheering for a team and you're from there or something? Then I get popping champagne, but yeah, no, I think uh, uh, seltzers probably is the middle ground there between the goods, okay. the like, the the new the drink everybody kind of likes Brett and also doesn't stain anything if it spills yeah and tell oh. people encourage people to wear the colors if they like any of these teams but I don't know that you're probably friends with anybody that cheers for these teams got one got Bengals a, fan in our crew all right that's cool I've got a Ram up the street that's all I know in the whole neighborhood nobody else is cheering for these two teams mm. I gotta throw a Patriots party my God every one of my neighbors. Uh -huh. Cheers for Patriots. Oh, I'm yeah. surrounded. It's like the Yankees have invaded my neighborhood. <laughs> like, what the hell? Actually, they were here for <laughs> so oh, so it's like the rednecks invaded the neighborhood then, huh? Well, yep, you got it. <laughs> yeah, come on. The South will <laughs> rise again. The South I just want to let y'all know my wife's 22 years younger than me. I got a ponytail. <laughs> I've had sex with 419 women, and I say nasty things on the radio. How y'all do? <laughs> Damn, what a, you need that on a business card. Yeah, it is. It's on the back of his business card. Hell, put that Hell, like that needs to be the line at the top of his resume. That's it. That's it. Oh my God. Well, it has been one hell of a fun show. And there was a topic we talked about bringing up for a couple of minutes. I can, I can let it go and we well, can close out proper. We can save we can, it. Yeah, we we'll can save, save it. it. We, we can bump it. Let me tell you, we got something stupid funny to do. And you're probably going to think we're you'll never look at us the same way, but I think it's funny as crap. Well. <laughs> I do. And I, and it involves third base and animals and, and, and people, and it's wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong, yeah. but it's funny. And I like it. It actually involves musicians in third base. That's really what it involves. I don't want to bring animals into it and have an activist on my porch tomorrow. <laughs> I heard what you did. <laughs> No, we don't need Heard beta. We, said. we need beta, not peta. <laughs> People don't oh, understand it more. We'll, get, we'll, we'll tease this one ahead. We'll take it on to a next we'll, episode. Yeah, that's we'll, right. We'll, yeah. Now they we'll, now they have to listen next episode. That's it. Now special you, thanks. Yeah, special thanks to JoeBees.com, Oxygen Financial, Circle 285, and Ridgeline Counseling, our proud sponsors of the yeah, Come On Show. This was show 119. I'm Southside Steve. That's Brett Barney. And that is Evan. We like to call him Brando, our newest member of the show. Gentlemen, can I get a yeah, come on? Uh, Brett, do you want, are we at the same time? or <laughs> I got it. Well, yeah, come I on. Take, we're going to let you do it, Evan. That was great. Uh, thank that you. Was awesome. I saw Brett was I'm, preoccupied I'm, with a bunch of uh, seltzers in his mouth. Brett just proved he can hold three different tastes in his mouth at one time. Yeah, come on.